Hello viewers, I am Deepthi Hans. Today I am going to discuss a very important topic from chapter current electricity which is Ohm's law. Today I am going to show you experimental verification of Ohm's law. To demonstrate Ohm's law, I have made this circuit here. A rheostat, it means variable resistance is here, emitter A and a resistor wire R are connected in series with this battery B. Taking care that positive mark terminal of emitter A is towards the positive terminal of the battery. The voltmeter V is then connected in parallel across the resistance wire. Now the battery B sends current in the circuit. The current in the circuit is changed by this variable resistor and emitter A measures the current. The voltmeter V measures the potential difference across the ends of the resistor wire. As I close this switch, current flows in the circuit. The rheostat is adjusted to get the minimum reading in the emitter A and voltmeter V. The emitter reading I and voltmeter reading V are noted. As I change the value of this variable resistor, you can see the readings in voltmeter and emitter are going to change. We will note this reading and then we will draw a graph. First of all, we will start with zero reading. It means the minimum reading in voltmeter and emitter and we note it as our first reading. Then we gradually increase the value of the current in the circuit. and plot a graph. As I am going to further change the value of this variable resistor, the corresponding value on voltmeter and milliammeter are both are changing. If the voltmeter reading is 2 volt, then the corresponding value on milliammeter is 0 0.4 milliampere. Further changing the value to 3 volt, the corresponding value on milliammeter is 0. 6 milliampere. If I further increase the value on voltmeter to 4 volt, then the corresponding value on milliammeter is 0 0.8 milliampere. Or further lowering the resistor and increasing the value of current and voltage coming to 5 volt, corresponding value on milliammeter is 1 milliampere. Further increasing to 6 volt on voltmeter, the value on milliammeter is 1.2 milliampere. Now for the verification of Ohm's law or to find the relation between voltage and current, we are going to plot these values on a graph. These are the values of voltmeter and milliammeter we have obtained during the practical demonstration of Ohm's law. We have seen corresponding to 0 reading on voltmeter, we obtained 0 on milliammeter also. So this graph will start from origin itself. Then our first value is 2 volt and corresponding value on milliammeter is 0 0.4. Then 3 volt corresponding value on millimeter is 0 0.6. 0 0.8 corresponding voltmeter value is 4. Then 1 milliampere corresponding value on voltmeter is 5. Then 1.8 2 corresponding value on voltmeter is 6. So as you can see as we are going to increase the current in milliammeter our value of voltage is also increasing. So if we plot this graph this will come a straight line starting from origin. It means voltage and current are directly proportional. According to Ohm's law current flowing in a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference applied across its end and the condition is physical conditions and temperature should remain constant. So whenever we plot this graph V upon I it is a constant and it this constant is given its value as R. So the unit of potential difference is volt and unit of current is ampere. So volt per ampere is known as unit of resistance and this unit is ohm in honor of German scientist George Simon Ohm and 
reciprocal of this resistance is known as conductance. Now we will find the value of resistance by finding the slope of this graph. For finding the slope of this graph, we need the value of delta V upon delta I. It means on Y axis, the reading on of voltage and on X axis, the reading of current. So our voltage reading is 2 volts and reading in milliampere is 0 0.4 but converting into ampere it is 0 0.0, 0, 0 0.0004 and our value of resistance comes out to be 5000 ohm. Similarly, when we divide 3 by 0 0.0006 we will get value 5000 ohm. Similarly, in all other cases we will get the value of 5000 ohm. And we can see the value of resistance is same and this ratio V upon I is known as resistance. The conductors which obey Ohm's law are known as ohmic resistors and they will show the similar graph like this because delta V upon delta I is a straight line starting from origin and value of resistance comes out to be same irrespective of the value of voltage or current. It means they are ohmic resistors and the examples are all metallic conductors like copper, silver, aluminium, iron, in fact nichrome and copper sulfate solution with copper electrodes and dilute sulfuric acid, all these are examples of ohmic resistors. The conductors which do not obey Ohm's law are known as non-ohmic resistor and the examples are junction diode, solar cell, filament of a bulb, LED, all these are non-ohmic resistors and they will not obey Ohm's law. So, they are curve is not a straight line in fact it is a curve and if we find the value of slope at any of its point then we take particular value and draw a tangent and then we can take the slope of delta V upon delta I. To conclude ohmic resistors follow Ohm's law their curve is a straight line non ohmic resistors do not follow Ohm's law their curve is not a straight line and it is necessary that in this graph, this value should start from 0, 0, it means origin. But for non-ohmic, this, this is not necessary that graph will start from origin. The value of slope is same in these ohmic resistor at all points. The value of slope is not same, so we will get different values of resistors at different value of this curve. As we know that V upon I is constant and this constant is known as resistance. And what is this resistance? It is the obstruction offered to the flow of current through a conductor is known as resistance. And you can remember this relation like V, then I and R. So, what is the value of V? It is equal to I into R. What is the value of R? It is V upon I. And what is the value of I? It is V upon R. So, you can summarize this in this way also. Now, coming to the factors on which resistance of a wire depends, our first factor is material of a conductor. It means good conductors offer less resistance and insulators offer more resistance. Like all metals are good conductors. Second factor is length of a conductor. It is directly proportional on this factor because as we are going to increase the length of the conductor, the number of collisions inside the conductor will increase and more number of collisions means more resistance because we know what is the cause of resistance. It is the collision of these free electrons with the protons as well as electrons, drifting electrons and this cause will increase if the conductor is longer. So, longer conductor offers more resistance. It means it is directly proportional to this factor. And third is area of cross section and inversely proportional on this factor because the more thicker the conductor, the number of collisions will reduce and it will automatically reduce the resistance of the wire. So, thicker conductor offers less resistance. And last is temperature, directly proportional on temperature. It means as the temperature increases, number of collisions inside the conductor increases and this will increase the resistance also. Now, as we have seen, resistance depends on length and it is directly proportional to the length of the conductor and inversely proportional to area of cross section of the conductor. And it means it is directly proportional to length and inversely proportional to area of cross section. If we want to remove this sign of proportionality, comes out to be resistivity or specific resistance of the conductor. 
इट मीन्स रो एल अपॉन ए आर इज इक्वल टू रो एल अपॉन ए बट इफ वी टेक ए कंडक्टर ऑफ यूनिट लेंथ एंड यूनिट एरिया ऑफ क्रॉस सेक्शन देन रेजिस्टिविटी ऑफ ए कंडक्टर इज इक्वल टू इट्स रेजिस्टेंस सो दिस इज द डेफिनेशन ऑफ रेजिस्टिविटी दैट रेजिस्टिविटी इज द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ ए कंडक्टर ऑफ यूनिट लेंथ एंड यूनिट एरिया ऑफ क्रॉस सेक्शन इट मीन्स दीज टू फैक्टर्स विल ऑटोमेटिकली रिड्यूस टू यूनिट इट मीन्स लेंथ वी आर वी कैन नॉट टेक एंड एरिया वी कैन नॉट टेक इट मीन्स रेजिस्टिविटी डिपेंड्स ऑन ऑनली टू फैक्टर्स वन इज मेटीरियल एंड अनदर इज टेम्परेचर now coming to the unit of specific resistance or resistivity we know the formula r is equal to rho l upon a it means resistivity is equal to r a upon l now what is the unit of resistance it is ohm what is the unit of area it is meter square and what is the unit of length it is meter so its unit is ohm meter so unit si unit of specific resistance is ohm meter now coming to the factors on which specific resistance depend so first of all it is a characteristic property of a substance and in the case of metal specific resistance is very low of the order of 10 to the power minus 8 ohm meter in the case of semiconductor it is low of the order 10 to the power minus 5 ohm meter and in the case of insulators it is very high of the order 10 to the power 13 ohm meter now coming to second factor which is temperature in the case of metals it increases with increase in temperature in the case of semiconductor resistivity decreases with increase in temperature and in the case of alloys such as constantan and manganin it remains practically constant and the reciprocal of resistivity is conductivity so 1 upon resistivity is equal to conductivity as we reduce the temperature in case of metals their resistance also decreases in substances like mercury and tin if we are going to lower the temperature their resistivity becomes almost zero or you can say negligible at this particular temperature when the conductor has zero or negligible resistance they become superconductor for example mercury below 4.2 kelvin is a superconductor but these superconductors the temperature maintenance is the biggest problem if it is possible to make superconductors at room temperature then the size of the computer will reduce to only few centimeters i am sure i have been able to make you understand ohm's law very clear with the help of this practical demonstration thank you for watching till the end bye